and welcome to the Emulsify 2.0 screencast. In this screencast, we'll be talking about the new BIM twig function. We at 4Kitchens love BIM so much that we have included it in Emulsify Core. It's not a strict requirement, but it is uh, something that is in our default components and that we encourage using. In fact, we love BIM so much that we've actually tightened the usage in Emulsify 2.0, where instead of using things like grid classes to define grid styling, we've actually put all of the classes into mixons so that they can be used in whatever classes you like. So let's jump right in to the BIM twig function. The problem we were trying to solve with the BIM twig function is that you have to deliver classes to Pattern Lab, but you also have to deliver classes into something like Drupal. Uh, now you can do that using just a typical syntax of class equals title. But the problem there is, if you use that and you pass it into Drupal, you are not going to receive the benefits of those classes that are added by the system. So like when you're logged in, the classes for the quick edit links and for the contextual links are added into what's called Drupal attributes. So the ideal situation is that we need to add classes to Pattern Lab and we need to add those to the Drupal attributes object when we're pulling those components into Drupal. In the past, we've done that using a few different methods. We've done some if-else statements to check for the presence of attributes, but that creates kind of a long syntax in all of your Twig files. We've also just taken the approach of avoiding using contextual links and quick edit, but that loses some of the niceties that Drupal ships with. So we sought to not only solve this problem, but also to make a simple syntax for using uh, BIM, style classes. So you'll see here on the BIM Twig extension GitHub page that we've defined some usage around how to enter these classes using this new function. The new function is easy, easy to write, easy to remember, it just is BIM. And then inside of that, you can pass one of four arguments. There's only one that's required and that's the, the base class. So in this case, if you had an H1 element and you put in title as a string, it's going to give it an H1 element with a class of title. You can also add other arguments. And so and you'll see in this scenario, we're actually adding the small and red modifiers, which creates this nice modified syntax of BIM where you have the title uh, element and you also have two classes that are modifier classes added as well. Now the third argument is actually a block name argument. This is a little bit confusing because if you were just writing these classes, you would actually just write class equals card. But in our scenario, we need to be able to pass these in to different elements uh, using Twig's include functions, which I'll show you here in a second. And so in this case, we're actually passing the block name of card, which as you can see below, is actually going to make title into the element name. So now we have an H1, but it has the class of card title and then it also has the modifiers, card, double underscore title, double dash small, and red. Uh, you can also leave these optional ones empty. So if you want to make card title and you don't need the modifiers, we show you the syntax for that. And then finally, there's one fourth argument that is optional as well, and that's really to add classes that might fall outside of the BIM syntax. This is a very minimal scenario. You might not need this very often, but if you do, it's nice to be able to add a class, for instance, for use, usage with JavaScript. So let's look at some code. Here we have our link component. And as you can see here, we've greatly simplified the syntax with this new function. So here we're passing in three arguments, the base class, the link modifiers, and the link block name. So in this situation, we're only setting one of these in this file. And we're setting that to the value of link. So here we are in Pattern Lab and we're looking at this link and let's inspect it here. And you'll see we have the class of link and also a couple of modifier classes. We're actually adding those in the link YAML file over here as modifiers. And so those are being passed in as well. We could also pass in a block name. Uh, and let me show you an example of that now. And so here we have an example of an H1 that has a link inside of it. Now this is actually using our headings, Adam. So let's take a look at the code there. And the heading.twig file, which we've also changed in Emulsified 2.0, 
we've simplified it to be a single file. After all, a heading tag only re really needs uh, the heading level inserted, which is just another uh, value that we can pass in the include. So you'll see we have H and then the heading level there. But for our purposes here, you'll see that we have the BIM styling applied to the header itself, but then we also have a statement that says, if there is a heading URL, go and include this link file and pass these variables uh, that we define on the heading into those link variables that are defined in that file. When using BIM, you would like to have a, a class name that makes sense for the element itself. In this case, we have the class name of H1. So H1 is our base class. But since we have an element that's nested in it, we want that element to have a block element syntax. So it's actually H1 double underscore link. The way we are doing that is we are telling the link block name to be set to this variable, which has the default of heading base class, which as you can see up here, we're actually making uh, H and then the heading level. So in this case, in our example that we're looking at, it's an H1. So that's how we're getting the base class H1. And then it's going to use uh, the link base class as now the element name. So again, this is an example where we're passing in a block name and we want our base class to, to provide the element name. Hopefully you can see in these examples the flexibility here where you can provide simple classes or you can provide modifiers as well as custom block names and pass those back and forth within your twig files. We have found this function to be invaluable, not only in cleaning up our files, but in being able to tell what kind of classes we need to pass on and really to just clean up our, our CSS as best as possible to where everything is following true BIM conventions. So now let's take a look at an example of this in Drupal. You've seen that the classes are successfully passed into Pattern Lab, but now let's see them being added to the Drupal Attributes object. Here I have a Drupal 8 site up and running, some pre-populated content. And you'll see here that if I inspect this element, it's inside a node article, it's the H2, and it has a H2 link for the title. Let's go over and look at our node file in Emulsify. So here we have the node file. I'm gonna scroll down. You'll notice that I'm using the BIM function to pass in the node class to the article element itself. But I'm also using this include here to include the heading file. I want it to be an H2. And again, this is the link um, for the title on a teaser. And so I want it to be an H2. I want to pass in the URL value. And I only fill in these variables that we need here. You don't have to fill them all in. You'll see over here that that automatically creates an H2 with the class of H2 and then gives the link inside of it an H2 double underscore link. You'll notice on the article itself that we have a lot of other information being added. Some of this information is important for, for editing. So for instance, you can click on this and click quick edit or edit to edit this node from here. This kind of information is applied by other modules and you'll see that our node class is actually added alongside the other classes. So it is added to the attributes object. So the BIM twig extension is actually available via the Drupal Pattern Lab Initiatives GitHub page. We use it in Emulsify Core, but we've offered it as a standalone Twig extension to be used in any project that might be able to leverage its capabilities. So feel free to download it and try it out in your own project. Let us know if you run into any issues, and we hope it's as useful for you as it has been for us in our projects. Thank you.